Hello, everybody. Let's see if I can get this adjusted. Welcome to Sunday Night Live. I've got to get my screen going here. Hi, Michelle Davis and Sarah. And there I am. Woohoo! Hi, Christine from Minnesota. Lisa, Karen, welcome. Sandy from Little Shoot. Brenda, glad you could join us. Mickey, how are you? We've got everybody popping on. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Sandy. Brooke, hello from work. Yay, you, Brooke. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. So, you guys, how was your week? Did you do anything? Did everything go okay? That's always a successful week for me when everything goes okay. I had a couple people message me and ask me how my Anna's doing. Um, she's doing really well. She's finally starting to feel better where she's actually doing some things like um, her and her husband, they have a permanent camper at a campgrounds, and they went there. We had the girls overnight, so that was fun. Um, did a little stamping. If you were on my Facebook page earlier today, you saw that um, I did a little stamping with Andy and Molly. Molly had a, well, Andy and Molly both had a dance recital Friday night, and Molly's teacher, she invited her, and she came so that was super cute. So I thought we better make her a fun um, thank you card. And then Andy made a birthday card for a friend that's got a birthday coming up. So that was really fun. And it's um, one of the cards, one of the fun folds that I am going to show you tonight. Hi, Judy Brown. Thanks, Suzette, for sharing. Hi, Debbie. So that was really fun. We had a fun weekend. We went for ice cream yesterday. Um, we went to shop code to get a new trouble game because if you buy the game that there's one that's really chintzy and the little pieces don't stay in place. We had a mean game of trouble going on yesterday and um, it was terrible. So I'm like, I need to get the old one, you know, with the plastic things where you stick it in the little clear plastic plate instead of these little black knobby things. It was horrible. But we went to Shopco to get that, and they didn't have it. They just had the crummy one. So I'm going to, um, I'll find someplace else to get it. Hi, Linda. Hi, Claudia. What else is happening this week? Um, let's see. I've got exciting news. My husband just came in the house a little while ago and told me that he is going to order a dumpster. And I'm like, oh, geez, what's he going to do? <laughs> we live, well, well, I'll get to that part. But, um. He's going to order a dumpster. He said he's going to tear the deck off the back of our house. I'm like, woohoo! We're going to get a new deck. Well, we're going to lose an old deck. I hope we get a new deck. But yeah, that's pretty exciting. Um, for those of you that know me and have been here, you know that I live in a very old house. Our house was built in 19, no, 1800. So it's 118 years old. And um, you think, oh, it's got all kinds of character and charm. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's just an old house. Um, it doesn't have any character and it doesn't have any charm. Um, it's pretty crappy. But the one thing that I really love about my house is I have a big swimming pool in the backyard. So that keeps me happy about my crappy house. <laughs> Um, so now we're going to get a new deck and that's where I would like to concentrate our um, efforts because that is my paradise in the summer and I love spending time out there and we've needed a new deck since we bought this house like 20 years ago. There's a lot of things we've needed, but um, I'm excited. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Kathy. So let's see. Um, let me know where you're coming to me from. Where are you from? I know we've got a lot of... Um, a lot of different places all over the country and actually all over the globe uh, in a little while um, well I shouldn't say in a little while it's pretty late over in the UK but I do have some followers there too hi Linda from San Diego so um, 
Let's see, I wanna thank you for joining me tonight. I have some fun folds that I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna start off with some really, um, a, an easy layout that I always love to make. And then we're gonna do a wiper card, which is really fun. And then our last card is like a holy cow, are you kidding me, fun fold. I think you're gonna love it. Hi Denise from Kentucky, Bernice. Mary, Diana, oh I'm sorry, Diane from Marquette, Michigan. Um, let's see, I wanna announce winners from last week. So let me do that. I've got, let's see, there's three ways you guys can win. You know that, hi Shelby and Karen. Um, and Francie, woohoo, Francie got on Facebook again. This is like epic. Um, three ways you can win, commenting like you are now. You know, comment, interact with me. Sometimes I get so wrapped up in making my cards, I forget to look at the comments. So just know that. I always go back through and answer any questions that weren't answered during the live broadcast. Um, but you can win by commenting. I do a drawing for commenting. I do a drawing for if you share this video. So once, well, I think you guys can click on share right now and share this video. You get entered in a, into a drawing for that. And then you also get entered into a drawing when you place an online order with me. So I've got three winners today. I've got Deborah Anderson. Are you on? I didn't see, I don't remember if your name came across yet. Deborah Anderson from Florence, South Carolina. You are going to win the petal pair embossing folders. So if you could please... Um, Private message me your address so I can get these out in the mail right away. I know you're going to love them. And then I have Karen Drain. If you're on here, I also need your address. Karen's from Erie, Michigan. And she's going to win a pack of the Tutti Fruity Designer Series Paper Stack. So that's cool. Congratulations. So let me get this stuck back on here so I don't forget what I'm doing. And then I have Jennifer Prang from Richfield, Wisconsin. Watercolor pencils, woohoo! Um, we are going to be using these tonight. Mary Olson had asked if I could do something with watercolor pencils, I remember that. So we're gonna be using watercolor pencils tonight and I'm gonna show you how fabulous they are and how easy they are to use and some great tips about them too. So that'll be fun. Let me set this stuff aside so I don't, whoops, don't lose it here. I kind of like that I'm live every Sunday night because I have to clean up my room <laughs> at least once a week. And I know you guys understand as crafters, we are, things get messy really fast, don't they? It's like, eh, really, really fast. Um, let's see, what else do I have going on here? Oh, I know, I received some cards in the mail and I have to share them with you. So I'm gonna start first with Mary Lynn Weller. Mary Lynn is from Washington, and she shared this pretty card with me. I believe she used some embossing paste here with colors in it, and then there's a little story about this. This is a stone. Can you see that? Yeah, look at that. That's a stone. So Mary Lynn sent me this card. Oh, and look at the inside. Very pretty also. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. It says, Dear Kelly, why is there a rock on the front of this card? Well, a friend asked me, hired me, to create cards incorporating sea glass. Quite a project. Anyway, so here you go, a card with both um, Stampin' Up! products and your very own piece of Pacific Northwest Washington State sea glass. Hope you like and enjoy it. Mary Lynn, this is so very unique. I absolutely love it. So thank you for sending that to me. I really appreciate it. It's just, It's been displayed on my desk all week. Then I also received a card from Barbara Pike of Rochester, Minnesota. Barbara sent this fun card. Isn't this great? She put a lot of work into this. And it says, Hi Kelly, I watched your video on Brusho and used different folders and I tried Brusho and it's not my thing. <laughs> anyway, she says I made this card with the Seaside Shore stamp set and folder, sponged it with Marina Mist like the way it turned out and just wanted to share it with you. 
So thank you, Barbara. That was so sweet. What a nice card. Oh, and Barbara actually made her envelope too. This is made out of Marina Miss cardstock. I'm not going to show, well, I can cover up her address. So she made her own envelope with our envelope punch board, I'm assuming. Good job. Love to see that, right? And then I got another card from Kay Ackers from Boise, Idaho. Kay sent this beautiful card. Love it. And she said, thank you for all the free stuff you have sent me. Kay was one of our winners. I am so thankful I stumbled onto you when I was surfing Pinterest. Your creativity and enthusiasm has really encouraged this old beginner. See you on Facebook. Thank you so much, Kay. That is just the sweetest. Who doesn't love getting beautiful cards in the mail, right? Okay. Um, let's see. What else did I want to tell you about? Oh, I'm getting ready to make cards. Hi, Darlene. I'm getting ready to make cards for my online club. So I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about that. If you are long distance and you can't come to my local classes, there is a way that you can be in one of my stamp clubs. And um, each month, oh, and Claudia says, don't forget to demo embossing paste. We're not going to do that tonight, but I will get to that. I should write that down. Hang on a second. Let me get that written down. Embossing paste. I think I wrote that one down already. But anyways, I have an online club. And each month you place a minimum order. And I can't remember exactly what that is. If it's $25 or $30. And then I send you an instruction sheet. And also the card made with the technique that we're doing for the month. And so you get to collect all of these um, sheets. I wish I would have gotten them out. Maybe I'll get them out a little later and show them to you. And um, you get a card in the mail and an instruction sheet. So you can put all these instruction sheets together um, on a like a ring. And you can have a whole book of techniques. It's very cool. Now, at the end of six months, you get, I think you get to order $30 in product from me for free. So if, you're, if that's something you're interested in, I will post the link to the online club. Let me write that down too because, you know, my memory isn't what it used to be. Online club link to my Facebook page so you can check out the details on that. It's really fun. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to tell you about is I have a Facebook group that is um, specifically for my VIPs. And how do you become a VIP with me? you place an order. My Facebook group has exclusive content that you don't see on the internet or on my blog or any place else. Um, I share projects on there. We also have a fun thing going right now, a getting to know you series, where we've got, I've got some fun questions and everybody's um, popping in and, and answering them. And I'm giving away prize, so I have prize patrol for that too. So everybody that's participating goes into a drawing and I give away free Stampin' Up! product there too. So if you'd like to be in my VIP Facebook group, it's a private group. Um, you can only get there when I add you to the group. If you place an order through my Stampin' Up! store, you can get access to this VIP group. And you'll find my store at www.astampabove.com. And you'll find an online ordering button over on the right-hand side. So just wanted to make sure you knew about that. Also, um, April 16th, I have been asked by a fellow demonstrator to head up a team to raise money for autism. April is Autism Month, and I will be doing a blog hop on April 16th that is going to have some fabulous demonstrators in it and I think we're going to have a theme for the projects that we make and you'll be able to click on the next link and go see another blog and what they made and click on the next link and go see what they made. Thanks Sherry. I think the getting to know you is really fun. I found out some really interesting things about all of my um, customers. It's, it's great and I think they found out some interesting things about me too. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's going to be a lot of fun. Watch for that coming up. Let's see. What time is it? I think that we are ready. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to flip my phone around and um, get ready with our projects. So hang tight here. Now, one thing that I tried earlier today while I was practicing is um, 
zooming in and zooming out while I'm live, and it really does work. One thing that happens is sometimes my phone camera will flip around and I just have to click it and flip it back. But if that happens, just hang tight. If I lose you for some reason, please um, click on the name of my page in the top right corner under my picture that says a stamp above your creative coach. And that will refresh your screen. Scroll down until you see me. I am wearing this today, stripes with burgundy. So look for that video and you can click on there and you'll see me live again. Will I be live next Sunday? Oh, next Sunday is Easter, isn't it? What do you guys think? I'm going to my mom's house Thursday and I know we'll be home early Sunday. So I was planning on being live on Easter. Do you think that'll be okay? So I'm going to be back home. I don't go live till six o'clock. You guys let me know what you think about that. And um, I'll see how that goes. All right, time to flip. Hang with me. This always gets kind of scary. Okay, I'm having a little trouble with my stand here. Whoops, hang on, it just popped down. There we go. Yeah, this is tricky. I found, somebody told me there's a software that will do all this for me. Now, do you see it's kind of drooping here? Let's see if I can get it tightened up. Oh, it was really loose. Are we good now? I think we're pretty good. Okay, I think that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna, whoops, see, I just flipped it, so just hang tight. I just wanted to make it, there we go. Okay, so I zoomed in, zoomed out. All right, this is gonna have to work. Okay, let me get on my computer here so I can see what's going on. And there we go. All right, you guys, I think we're ready to rock. Let me bring in I want to make sure that I get in the picture frame because some of my videos lately, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I'm way down here and my card's way down here and people can't see it. And it's so frustrating. I filmed two or three videos last week and forgot to turn my phone on. <laughs> yep, that happens. That's great. Our phones are really our best way to do videos, so we've been um, pretty fortunate with having those. Okay. Now this fun fold doesn't really have a name, but it's a gift card holder and it's really easy. And I wanted to start off with an easy one. So let's see, where's my stamp set? I chose to use the bubble over stamp set and the bottles and bubbles framelits. These are really, really fun. Fun little set of framelits. And one of the cool things Stampin' Up! has started doing is they've started putting two dies in for some of these things that you might need to cut multiples out of. So we've got two straws. There's two big bottle caps, two small bottle caps. Um, we've got a small label, a big label, just doubles of things so you don't have to run it through so many times has been fabulous. There's a big bottle in here and a little bottle. So I'm really happy about that. And then this stamp set, while this can certainly be soda for um, the teetotalers in your life or for kids, it can also be beer. Have a birthday brew. So we have man cards. What I've got here is a piece of lemon lime twist. Hang on a second, let me find my notes here. 
Yep, okay. Let me get the, that's glaring at you. I can see that. You guys, let me know if anything's annoying because lots of times I'm not paying attention. I just get going on the stuff and oh, forget it. I'm gone. <laughs> okay, so what I've got here is a piece of lemon lime twist. And this is four and a quarter by 11. And I'm going to score it at two and five and a half. So put it in our trimmer here and score it two and five and a half. So far, so good. You guys are still with me? <laughs> I'm just teasing. That was super easy. Oh, let me plug in my phone too so we don't have any problems like I did that one time when I ran out of juice. That was so not cool, right? Okay, we're plugged in. Yay! All right. I'm going to find my bone folder here. So I'm going to take the lemon lime twist, fold on these score lines. Give it a good burnish. And then we're going to take this score line and fold it in just like this. Okay. Now we've got some stamping to do. I've got my lemon lime twist ink here. I'm just going to move these out of the way. Here's our lemon lime twist ink, and I'm going to take the smaller of the two bottles, ink that up, and I'm going to stamp. Oops, I see I didn't ink it up very good, did I? I like that. I love photopolymer. Isn't it fabulous? I'm going to stamp that, and then I'm coming in with some Memento black ink. And I'm going to stamp the greeting on it. Your kindness is most refreshing. Now, who would I give this card to? Um, it's kind of a masculine card. Hang on here. All right, you're going to see my head in here maybe. I have to put my head in there so I can see what I'm doing. Isn't that just the cutest? Look at that. So, um... If somebody helped me, or like when our neighbors go away, they always tell us we're going away. Can you please keep an eye on the house? And of course, we're more than happy to do that. I could maybe get a little $5 Starbucks gift card to put in this card and give this to a man. So that's where I'm coming from here. Now I'm also going to stamp this thank you. I'm going to punch that out with our three-quarter inch punch. Is that glaring at you guys? You guys let me know if something's... It's hard when I have to have lights on and then I've got shiny things. Ooh, shiny things. Um, yeah. So I've got a thank you. I've got this bottle. And let's see, is this the bigger one? I need the smaller bottle here. And I am going to die cut this in my big shot. Through the magic of TV, I've already done that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and then I also used this little thing that looks like a round bottle cap, okay? And I die cut that with the silver foil paper, so I've got this. Then I took one of the small bottle caps. That's right here on the sheet, one of these small ones. And I die cut that. And then I also have just a white straw here. So I've got all my stuff die cut. You guys know how to do that. I didn't want you waiting for me to do it. It's kind of annoying, isn't it? Um, sometimes I do because I want you to see how I do it. But other times I just don't think it's necessary. Yeah, Mary loves magic TV. Me too, Mary. Okay, I am going to glue my thank you right to the inside of this. And that's ready to roll. Then I'm going to take my straw and I'm going to put this right behind my bottle. And one thing that I like to cheat at is I like to use tape when I can. And I think tape is perfect for the back of this because you're never going to see it, right? There's our little straw. And let's see, what else do I need to do? I think we can start building our card. Let's get this closed up. Okay, I am going to add all my layers here. So this is going to be my front layer, so that's going to go right here. Oh, you know what? I want to put, ooh, do I have a little strip? Oh, hang tight, you guys. I think I'm missing something. 
I am. I don't have a little strip. I know I cut one. All right, hang on. Thank goodness my paper is right here. And I will... <clears throat> I'm just pulling out this little piece right here. I just want a row of these bottles to go on the front of my card because I think they are stinking adorable. Now you guys remember, this is the Bubbles and Fizz Designer Series paper that I'm using here. You can see I've got a pack of it all chopped up here. I absolutely love this paper. It's free during celebration. This is our celebration paper. And one of the cool things is you get 12 by 12 sheets of these big bottles. These bottles you can cut out with the bottle framelits that come in the set of framelits. They fit on here perfectly, so you can cut all these out too. So that's pretty darn cool, I think. It was pretty ingenious of Stampin' Up! to do that. Okay, back to our card. Ooh, I get sidetracked easily. Okay, I am just going to put some glue right on here and I'll cut this to size once I have it on here. That's why I didn't glue this onto the front of my card yet because I always like to put all my pieces together before I start putting them on the card base. It's just easier to cut this way, right? Okay, now we can put this on the front. Mickey has two packages of this. Yeah, you bet. Uh-oh, something's wrong here. Oh, I knew I scored this wrong. That's what I thought. Hang on. We can fix that. Where's my lemon? Oh, that's not a good piece. Sorry, we had a scoring malfunction here. I'll bet you this needed to be scored at two and a half, not two. Yep, two and a half, not two. That looked really weird. I'm like, oh, that doesn't look right. So I'll use this for something else. Don't worry. I'm going to rescore here at, oops, I almost cut it. Don't do that. Five and a half and two and a half. That's better. Easy mistake to make, right? Okay, we got that. Then again, we're going to fold this in and burnish that edge good. And now I'm just going to touch up a little bit of the glue here and put this on the front of our card where it will fit properly. <laughs> um, yep, there we go. That's just cute. It is cute. I love all these really vibrant colors. All right, next I'm going to get out my dimensionals and I'm going to pop this bottle up on dimensionals because you know things should be popped up. <laughs> I love things that are popped up. Oops, there we go. And here comes our little bottle and I'm going to just set that right down here about like this. I've got it tilted a little bit. Our straw is too long. Don't worry about that. Just nip that little bugger off. We can make anything fit here, right? Then I've got this layer. I love these bottle tops. And this Bermuda Bay on the back is really pretty too. Make sure that you're watching these hearts. You don't want them to be upside down. And I'm just going to put that right here. And then we've got a white piece. This is the piece that you would write on. That's going to go right up against this one. Actually, I'm gonna overlap it a little bit because it looks like I cut it a little crooked. And you know, that happens. Then I've got, did you guys see my, oh, here it is, my ribbon. Oh, here, this reminds me, my husband wanted me to show this to you. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> this was my cup, but he took it. I don't drink um, coffee out of a cup. I have my big insulated thing. So yeah, isn't that cool? There, Steve, if you're watching, I showed him the cup. I'm Like I said, I'm not quite sure why. So he's just kind of goofy sometimes. Okay, now I've got this is our 3 8 inch wide ribbon. This is in the mini catalog. It's lemon lime. 
and I just ran out of this roll. How about that? Wow, I used a whole one. I'm just going to tie this in a knot. This is just going to add interest to our card. It's not really tying anything together. We just want it to look pretty. Okay, and when I put ribbons in cards like this, I like them to stay where I put them. Does that make sense? So if this wasn't staying in place where it belonged, I might just add a little mini glue dot below my knot. Let's see. Yep, because I want it to stay right on the edge of our designer paper here. So where's my mini glue dot? So here's a good tip for you guys. I've done this before on my YouTube videos. If you use your bone folder, for some reason, these mini glue dots do not stick to these bone folders like it, they do your fingers and everything else. They are a fabulous tool for picking them up and putting them where you need them. Just like that. There we go. So now my knot isn't going to go any place. All right, I've got this little bottle top here. I'm going to put just a touch of glue on it. And I'm going to put that right here. And it's just a fun little element. It draws attention. And I like that we have a bottle top, so I want to use it. <laughs> How about that? And then this piece is going to go on the inside right here as a little pocket. And we need to, I'm using a one and a half inch circle punch. And I'm just going to put this in about mm, halfway or so centered in the middle and this is where I come in I'm gonna use my tear tape tear tape is like sticky strip only you can tear it and it's some pretty cool stuff you can just tear it off like that and it's very very sticky so one little thing that I found is like you know if you get it and it's not quite the right length like this goes over that fold line Start with it out here and then it doesn't matter because when you do this, it doesn't matter if you get it all the way over here. Does that make sense? I'm like, oh, that was a really good idea, Kelly. Okay, and then grab a pokey tool here. If you have nice thin fingernails, you can pick this off with those, but mine are thick and I need to get them done. What color should I go with you guys? I need to get my nails done this week, and I don't know what color I'm going to use. Just let me know. I'll, I'll check that out. Let's see. Sherry does the mini glue dots on the ribbon, too. So, cool. All right, and then last but not least, this is my little greeting for the inside of this card. There's my thank you. I have room to write right here. Here's our cutie patootie little card. Isn't that just sweet? You can put cash in here. You can put a um, bank card in here, or I mean a bank card. <laughs> well, if you want to, I'm not that generous. Um, a gift card in here. And this is just an easy little fun fold, right? This is one of the simplest fun folds you can make. All right, now. If you guys were on my Facebook page earlier today, you saw that Andy and Molly were making a card. And I am going to demonstrate that one next. And then I'll show you the cards that they made because they turned out really, really good. And then if, if a seven and an 11 year old can make these cards, I know you can too, right? Oops, I don't need to do that. Let me put this stuff away. Don't forget, bubble over, this comes as a bundle. And once again, if you place a $50 order, you can get this paper free. So I don't remember how much this bundle is, but I think it's around $40 or $45. Add a little something to it, like the ribbon, and you can get this paper for free. This only lasts until the end of March. So March 31st is the last day for celebration. All right, putting things away. Here we go. Oh, I think I need tear tape again, so I'm going to leave that out. One of our cute little cards. This out of the way. Oh, you know what I can show you? Check this out. So let's see. This is um, a display board that I make. I host a bundle swap every month, and the Bubble Over Bundle was part of one of our swaps in maybe last month. So I've got all of these different cards using this bundle. 
How cool are these? I hope this isn't glaring too much for you guys. And you can see them. But they are all absolutely adorable. Yay! All right, I just wanted to share that with you. Next is our wiper card. Oh, wait. Ah. I got ahead of myself a little bit. So I had a couple more cards that I made here. Here's, here's our first card. And then I made this card. What do you guys think of this? Again, gift card holder. And this one. Yay. Let's see. Did I have... Oh, I think, oh, here's the stamp set. The stamp set that I used for this is called Lovely Wishes, and it has all these floral items in it. And this is the first time I've cracked it open, so I really didn't know what, I, I didn't pay real close attention to it. But the cool thing that I like is you've got this vine, and then you can stamp this in one color and stamp the leaves in the other color. So this is a two-step stamp set. Same with this. You stamp this and then you can stamp this over top of it and it'll stamp in your leaves. I've got these cute little flowers and all the um, insides for these flowers and leaves also. So that's what I used on this part right here because I thought it really matched the Springtime Foils Designer Series paper. Do you want to see how I did this? I can show you how I did that. This is the exact same layout as this one, right? Okay, so a couple things. I thought, ooh, let me cut this first. So I've just got a couple samples here. Remember, this is that springtime foils paper that I did all those really cool techniques with. Yeah, and it comes with that flowery paper. I've got that all cut up. That's what my stamp clubs are making this month, so. I don't have any of that to show you, but so um, first thing I thought is, hey, why don't I make a card out of this? This would be a cool card, right? And I would just take my rich Razzleberry ink and I would just drag it across this to make it the color that I wanted it to be. Remember, you don't want to get your fingerprints all over this paper because the ink doesn't really stick to them nicely. Isn't that pretty? This is Rich Razzleberry. It looks almost like Berry Burst. So once you do this, then you come in and you kind of um, buff it like you're waxing a car. Have you guys ever waxed a car? That's a lot of work. I used to do that when I was a kid. We lived out in the country and it was boring. So I would just wax our trucks. But so then you've got the silver and the gold really shines through, right? So that's how I made this card. I just pulled my ink over this. And of course that resists it. And then I used the gold um, metallic edged ribbon. That's really pretty. And the layering ovals and the stitch shapes. All right, so what about this one? This one has orange in it. And how did that happen? Well, I fell on that by accident. So let me show you. I've got my um, Old Olive Light Stampin' Blend marker. And what I did is I came in and I colored all these leaves, and I say all like it was some big chore, it really wasn't, it's pretty simple. Colored these leaves, and I did say light old olive, okay? And it kind of almost looks yellow on here. Then I came in with my ink pad, whoops, there I just, hang on, I just stuck my finger in the ink. I've had a lot of people asking me this week what kind of baby wipes I use. These are Huggies One and Done. And um, they don't leave lint all over everything. They're nice and thick. They're, you know, they're not the cheapest ones, of course, because they're Primo um, baby wipes. But I, I really do like them. Okay, here we go. I am going to get the ink on here. And you can do this with any color. I'm, whoops, I just happen to be using Rich Razzleberry. And you just want to get your get your piece covered here and then come in and buff it off the strangest thing is that my old olive light stamp and blend marker that's an alcohol marker turns orange and I 
think I like this pink and orange together. What do you guys think? I thought this was pretty cool. Okay, then for the rest of my card here, I decided to color in these stripes and I just skip one, leave one white. Gosh, I'm gonna have a whole bunch of cards I can finish up here. Just like that, super easy. You could try other colors and see what they do because this is the only color that I tried. And then again, oh my gosh, I just think it's so pretty. And it's so strange how that green turns orange. But I guess, well, I guess the colors, you know, like you learn that in art class, right? What colors mix together to make different colors. So there we go. And that's where I got this from. Pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Okay, there we go. Now, on to our wiper card. Sorry, I completely forgot what I was doing there. I knew I wanted to show these to you, but missed that boat. All right, next. Let's get this out of the way. We'll get this out of the way. Okay, here comes... Guess what we're using? Ah, I'm excited because this is stinking adorable, right? I absolutely love it. So I've got my stamps all mounted here and ready to roll. We're gonna use our watercolor pencils for this. These are gorgeous. I think these are only like $15 you get. How many do you get in here? Oh, it's going to make me count. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of them. And you get white and black. Where's the black one? There we go. White and black. So that's kind of neat. So you can actually color on dark colored paper. And I'm going to show you a great little tip about this that I learned while I was making these cards. First thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to bring in my stamp and trimmer. Let me get a drink. My throat's getting a little dry here. Okay, I have this piece. This is cut at six and three quarters by eight and a half. And I need to see which way is the eight and a half. Let me put this on my grid paper. Okay, this is the eight and a half. All right, so on the shorter, on the six and three quarter side, we are going to score at one inch. Oops, I almost cut it. Don't cut it, get your cutting blade out of the way. And one and three quarters of an inch. And you guys, I usually post all these projects from my Facebook Live on my blog on Tuesday. You'll find pictures, and underneath the pictures of these cards, you'll find the dimensions and scoring instructions for all of these. So if you want to write them down now, that's fine, but just know that you can go over to my blog and find them all in one place. Okay, once we have this done, now we're going to turn it to the long side. This is the eight and a half inch side, and we are going to cut it at four and a quarter. So this was eight and a half by six and three quarters. And now we're gonna cut four and a quarter. We need two pieces just like this. All right, next. I chose the um, Tutti Fruity designer series paper for this. And while we have fruit on one side, most of the time, here's some kiwi type guava fruit things and some orange, grapefruit, lime, slices, apples, pineapples, there's watermelon, there's kiwi, more watermelon, strawberries. Um, while we have fruit on all of these, you'll notice that the other side is just a really cute design. So I used this piece, and that's what I decided to layer my wiper card with. So I've got this, this, and this, and it's just this on the other side. So this is gonna be the front of my card. First thing we're gonna do is we are going to score, I mean, sorry, we're going to burnish that backwards, and then we're gonna bring this one forward. 
and I'll show you just like that, okay? You're gonna do the same thing with the other one. It's gonna go back first and then forward. So when we put our card together, it's gonna look like this. First thing I'm gonna do is decorate this side. And with my We Must Celebrate, this is in the Occasions mini catalog. It is a stinking adorable little set. We're gonna stamp some words Get this out of the way so I don't make a mess. Friends forever. And I'm just going to stamp that right here. Hang on. Might get my head in the camera there. Let me see. I've got stuff popping up on my screen. Don't people know they're not supposed to be doing that while I'm trying to be live? <laughs> and there we go. So I started in the middle. That's where I stamped it first. And then I'm going to stamp it on each side. Friends forever. All right. Let me get that out of the way. Then you can come in right away and put your designer series paper on here. And I think, you know, the colors that you choose really make the card. Oh, and let me tell you about these pieces. These are just an eighth of an inch smaller than these little panels that I'm putting them on. So this is seven eighths inch by four and an eighth, this green piece. And then this one fits right in here. I want, did you notice how I made sure it fit before I put the glue on it? Yeah, I had some cutting problems with the girls earlier today. I cut all their layers wrong. They were real champs about it though. They didn't, they didn't yell at me or anything. <laughs> Okay, there we go. And then on this back piece, I'm going to stamp the same thing again. Now I have to think about this a little bit. So these go together like this. So here's the front of my card. This is the back of my card and I want my words to go this way. And once you make one of these, you will completely understand what I am talking about here. Perfect, okay. And then here's our other piece of designer paper. So not only is the front of this going to be super cute, but the back is decorated also. And it's kind of like, you know, me and my card insides. I like to decorate the insides of my cards because I think we neglect them and it's just another opportunity to make them really pretty. All right, front, back. We're going to deal with the front first. Let me see what I got going on here. I got all kinds of stuff happening. Got one of these, and here's our front piece. Oh, there we go. Now I know what's going on here. All right, we're gonna bring in some of our beautiful glimmer paper. And let me find, this is my little sampler of the glimmer paper. This is the Myths and Magic 6x6 um, paper stack. You get a whole bunch of sheets of each one of these. Um, glimmer papers in there. I absolutely love it. Who doesn't love glimmer paper? Um, so I've got a piece that goes on the front of my card right here. This piece is four and a quarter by three and a half. Oh, and then you know what? I think I'm missing my black layer. I am. Isn't that weird? I bet you that was the piece I put away earlier. It was laying out here and I didn't know why. So I just threw it in my, in my drawer here. I'm not going to wait and find that. Um, whoops. This is the piece we need. So this is three and a half by four and a quarter. I'm just going to cut three and five eighths, just an eighth of an inch bigger for the black layer. By, what did I say that was? Four and a quarter. So I'm going to go four and three eighths. There we go. And this is just gonna go behind here. Oh, I did really good. <laughs> Yay me! Okay, this is the front piece. So that's where our little animals are gonna go. When I use a big stamp like this, I like to see what's going on with it. So I lay it down on the table and I ink it up that way. And plus, you've got this raccoon, um, his mask and his tail rings that I wanna make sure I have those inked up really good so they're nice and dark. There we go. Oh, that turned out great. Then the piece that goes on the back, that piece is four 
by four and three quarters. And I just did some little things here. Inside this set, you get these little viney leaf things. And I just kind of use them to make myself a little bush. And then there's a little snail in there. Oh, look at I got black on my fingers. Dang it, I'm glad we didn't do any more work here. Let's start that over. Uh, here's my little leaf viney thing. Here we go. And our snail. I'm just going to put the little snail right there. Isn't that cute? Okay, now we're going to go to work. Oops, one thing I forgot. We have confettis. Oops, we're going to do some confettis. Right on our little animals layer, just like that, because this is going to be a birthday card. Okay, now watercolor pencils. I used brown, and this is Calypso Coral, Early Espresso, Old Olive, the gray. Did I use any other colors? Oh, and a little bit of pink, I think. These are the colors that I use. The pink is Melon Mambo. So I am going to start coloring in my animals. The gray is for my raccoon. Now, this is where I'm going to try to zoom in, you guys, so hang with me. Oop, I bet you I need to unplug this because my phone acts really stupid if it's plugged in. It is not letting me. Oh, there we go. Oh, I did it! Yay! Okay, that's okay if you're late. Don't worry about it. All right, so when I use... Um, watercolor pencils, you do not need to color nice. Look at how I just scribbled that around. It's the aqua painter that is really going to make all the difference. And you can see just how crummy that looks. Um, it's not nice coloring. So I'm just going to keep doing this first and then we're going to come back in and I'm going to use the aqua painter to blend everything. See how Yucky that is. Now, orange on a squirrel, now I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of brown. So that's just gonna make that squirrel a little bit different color on his tail and his little belly part. I have a funny story about squirrels. So my mom lives out in the country. She does not like squirrels. Um, squirrels are very destructive and they will like get into your crawl space under your house and they will you know, chew up your wiring and oh, all kinds of horrible stuff. So they're really like, they're like rats with fluffy tails, okay? And I'm sorry if I have any squirrel lovers out there, but they really are. <laughs> I was there. Um, I, I went there and just stayed overnight this week. I have an uncle that's in the hospital. He is not um, doing well and not supposed to. He won't be recovering. So I went to see him and say my goodbyes. Um... And I was at my mom's house, and uh, all of a sudden, she goes running out the door with a shotgun. Now, my mom's 72 years old. She goes running, she'll be 73 here shortly, running out the door with a shotgun. And she comes back in, and this is not unusual, so I wasn't too alarmed. And she comes back in, and she goes, I got him. So there was a little red squirrel, and he is no more. <laughs> Yeah, that's my soon-to-be 73-year-old mom with her shotgun. It's it's funny how different things can be, you know, from household to household. That's just common. There's a shotgun sitting in the corner of the kitchen, and that's where it stays at my mom's house so that she can take care of the varmints. <laughs> it's pretty amusing. Sorry, animal lovers. I know, I know, but it's pretty funny. Um... Okay, aqua painter, here we go. Oops. Now, this is where the magic happens. And you guys, you can honestly see how I have just really, like, you're going, Kelly, seriously? That looks horrible. It does look horrible. But now you're going to come in and make the magic happen. And I usually like to have a tissue. I like to see, I, I do this to see how wet my aqua painter is. If it's too wet, I'll dab it off a little bit. Um... I'm going to start with my little squirrel here, 
and it always amazes me how big this brush is and how tiny little spots I can get into perfectly with it. It's a just a, a really beautiful um, artistic tool, Aqua Painter. You get a big one and a little one in a pack, and I think they're like sixteen or seventeen dollars. But I've had artists. Um, some of my customers, their moms, somebody's mom is an artist. I think it's Lisa um, Clotes. And her mom bought these aqua painters, and she said they are amazing. So they're really super good quality. To clean them off, you just wipe it back and forth until there's no more color. And now watch how I come in with this belly. And it's not orange. It's kind of a, I don't know, skin tony type color. So I just kind of made my squirrel look a little different there. Oh, I know. I want to put some pink in the raccoon ears, too. I hope Mary Olson is watching. She wanted to see these watercolor pencils. They really are fabulous. And the girls today, when um, Andy and Molly were making their cards, I'm going to just wipe that off so I can do the ears, they couldn't believe how fabulous it was once you added the water to your coloring and I can't wait to show you their cards because they did a really good job. But they're like, wow, this is so cool. I'm like, I know, right? We had fun. Okay. Doesn't that look nice now? I just missed a little bit right there. Okay, I'm going to clean that off a little bit. Here comes my bear. Now, you saw how I kind of drew lines around the outside and then I drew lines around his nose. When I go to blend that, it makes those areas darker and that gives it that artistic shadowing effect. I am not an artist, but I've watched other artists and how they do this and this is how they do it. So that's why I made pencil marks around the belly and around the outside of his body because then when I come in here like this, it does a natural shading that looks really cool, right? Claudia's dad had a shotgun sitting by the back door. Exactly! Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. We grew up out in the country, and you just, guns are guns, and we had them, and um, they were used to take care of things. That's why you don't see too many houses out in the country getting robbed because everybody has a gun. Hmm. Did I just say that? I did. <laughs> don't send me any gun hate and anything. I do not hate guns. I'm an avid hunter. And uh, I don't think people should go around blowing up schools with them. But let's not go there. <gasps> Look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh. So I just added a little bit of gray to the bunny. So the bunny's still white. It's not like as gray as my um, raccoon is, but it just adds that little bit of shadow. Now there's another thing I need to do here yet. And that is, you guys know how I am about things not just being out there in Never Never Land. I need some ground. And now I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to scribble around with the old olive. And you can clearly see I am not doing any artsy-fartsy anything here. I have just made a mess. But now once you come in with your aqua painter and blend this, this is the part the girls really loved. They thought this was the coolest thing ever today. And if you need to, you need to squeeze it a little bit. Get, get a little, mine's a little dry, so I'm going to give it a little squeeze, get a little bit more water coming out here. Now, if I want to, after this dries a little bit, I'm going to let the green dry and then I can come in. If I forget to do this, you guys, this is what you should do, is just color a little bit under each animal with the green and then um, blend it with your aqua painter again. And that'll make it look like each animal has a little shadow on that, on that grass. And that's a cool look, too. I'll probably forget to do it. But now you can come in and you can color these little confettis. I did not blend my confettis with the aqua painter because they're so little, there's no point, right? And, um, oh, look, through the magic of TV, la, la, I can do that green part that I was just telling you I was going to forget. So now I'm going to come in and I'm just going to color. I'm coloring pretty hard with this. And I'm just doing a little green like this. And doesn't that just look, it looks like, oh my gosh, Kelly, you just ruined it, right? Nope. Just 
adding that little bit of shadow. Cool, right? That looks fabulous. Okay. Oh, I know why I didn't have a black piece, you guys. No black. I decided to use this. So, this piece is three and a half by, uh, hang on, three and five eighths by four and three eighths. And again, these will all be on my blog. And now I'm going to stick this piece right on here. And I'm going to use mini glue dots for that. There's not a lot of things that like to stick to our glimmer paper because, you know, it's all glittery and, and that's kind of tricky. Oh, I wonder if tear tape would stick to it. I bet you tear tape would. I never tried that. It's a good idea. But I'm just going to put a bunch of little mini glue dots on here. Okay, so I've got six, seven. Oh, let's put one on that end too there. Glue dots are cheap. There we go. Okay, then I'm gonna put this right down on here and get it centered because how spectacular looking is that? Ah, cute, <laughs> super, super cute. Okay, where'd my dimensionals go? Did I put them away? I did, look at that, I put something away. That never happens. Now, we're gonna do dimensionals here. And I'm just gonna do five of these because these are pretty sturdy. One in the middle. Get the backs off. I need to vacuum in here so I probably could just throw these on the floor, but how would that look? That Kelly, she just throws everything on the floor. I really am putting them in a garbage can here. Okay. <sighs> what do you guys think? This is so cute. I love, love, love this. So I've got a couple. Oh, we needed to do this part too. Sorry. Um, I got ahead of myself. I was just celebrating how stinking adorable this is. But um, I've already colored in through the magic of TV these little leaves. And again, I did not uh, blend them, <clears throat> excuse me, with the aqua painter because it's just so tiny. But I am going to come in and blend my little um, snail here. And then his little snail trail. <laughs> right? Okay. So this goes like this. This goes like this. I need to put my snail layer on here like this. We're almost there, you guys. And then I'm going to show you a bunch of different little cards we made. Ooh, my glue does not... Seem to want to come out of there very good. Here we go. I've just got this white layer on here. Now, with a wiper card, you have something that pops up in here. And that's what this little piece is all about. This is two by two and three quarters. And I want to show you how I made the wiper part. I'm going to come in here. Hang on, you guys. I've got another light in this room I'm going to turn on. I forgot. It was light out when we started this, but now it's getting a little dark. There we go. Just brighten things up a little bit for me. Okay, so here's our two by two and three quarter inch piece. And I am going to um, put this in my paper trimmer. And I need the tip of this little piece, so I'm looking at the bottom left-hand corner, to get scored at a half an inch, but I need it to be on an angle. So I'm just going to line it up in here. I've got the point at the half inch mark, and then I'm kind of looking here and looking here to make sure that it's even. I'm going to get a good um, score line there, and I'm going to score that. And now this is what you have. It's just that little corner like that. Okay. Now here's where you can do a bunch of different things. So if you want to, you could stamp on here. But I decided to go a different route this time. And I'll show you some that I did stamp on. I punched out these balloons using the balloon punch. I've got two big balloons and a smaller balloon out of the um, Myths and Magic Glimmer paper. And I'm going to just glue these on here. Let's see, how did I decide I was going to do this? I was going to do this like this and this and then maybe that. Okay, 
but I'm going to do that last because we're going to put this inside. With your card like this, you're going to take it and just put it face down. You're going to bring this piece in here and you need it to be down about three, one and three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to bring out, hang on, I got a ruler here. I'm going to bring out this ruler and I'm gonna put it right up next to this first score line at one and three quarters of an inch, and that's where I want my paper to end. Now, if you don't like doing all this measury stuff, you can just stick it in there as far as you want, and it's gonna work just fine, okay? But um, the, the directions are down one and three quarters of an inch, and I'm just gonna make a little mark there, and you're gonna put some glue just on this little triangular corner. Look at, I got little goobers all over in there. Hang on, I'll get rid of that. Here we go. You're gonna set that right in here like this. And now you need to let this dry. So this was our front. Turned it over, put this down, one and three quarters of an inch. There's only glue on that little corner. All right. Now, we can make things happen here. This is the really fun part. All right, I'm going to put some glue on the back of my balloon. And I want my balloon to be about, hmm. You have to make sure that when your piece goes down in here, Yep, we're gonna be fine. That everything's gonna be in place. So that nothing's sticking out where it doesn't belong. Here's some more glue on this balloon. And then I'm gonna add this little one. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I haven't made this version yet, but it just came to me. It's like, ah, oh, I should do some balloons. Now we're gonna put our card together and watch the magic happen. I'm just adding liquid glue on this panel, this first outside panel, and you're going to glue that together. And I like to hold it up like this to make sure that all the edges are even. <laughs> this is so cute. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh. Don't worry, Charlene. You can come back and watch the whole thing later. Okay, and then here comes some more glue right on this little panel. And I'm just gonna lay this down flat. And again, make sure everything's nice and even. <laughs> this is, just makes me giggle. I absolutely love this. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna show this to you and then I'm gonna show you all the other cards that I have here. Ready? This card goes right in an envelope, and here's what happens when you pull it. Super cute, right? Oh my gosh. Did I get out the happy, what do I have here? Do I have happy birthday any place? I'm gonna have to stamp. Oh, there's happy birthday. I forgot to stamp happy birthday here. Let me do that. Let's see if I can ruin this card. <laughs> you know how that happens. <clears throat> and I did not ruin it. Woohoo! Kelly's winning today. So there's our super cute wiper card. Now, if you wanted to, you could put some more balloons on the back. I don't know. That wouldn't hurt anything. Super cute. Do you guys want to see the rest of them? Let's get those out here. Let me get all this put away. Um, I don't want to drop my cards into it. I'm gonna clean this one off. I don't have room for it in there. <clears throat> All right. Here's the one that I made that is almost exact, except I stamped We Must Celebrate that comes in the We Must Celebrate stamp set across here. And then with this one, I stamped on here We Think You're the Best with the little mushrooms that come in the stamp set. Whoops. Can you guys see? Um, let's see. I think I can probably zoom out again. So if I lose you, remember, click on my name. Oops, hang on. Um, 
Ooh. Nope. Okay, stay with me. I just flipped my camera around. There we go. Now we're zoomed out again. Okay. Oh, that makes me so nervous. But there you go. We think you're the best. And I even did it on the back. We think you're the best. Okay. So there's another cutie patootie one. And then, let's see. We've got... <clears throat> Here's another one that I made. And again, I'm using the Tutti Fruity Designer Series paper here. Let's see, where's that one at? Oh, right there. It's this polka dotted one with the orange on the back. And here I put the vines coming down so it's like they're under a tree. So that's kind of cute, right? And I did again the We Think You're the Best. And here's the back. I did some vines with the little snail guy. Cute, cute, cute. And then here comes Molly's card. This is the colors that she chose. And didn't she do just a fabulous job? Molly is seven years old and she, I think she did just fabulous. Here's her envelope. She had so much fun. You are awesome. She used that. That's from the Epic Celebrations um, stamp set. But this is for her teacher that came to her dance recital. And Molly's gonna write her little message right down here. Super, super cute. I have to remember to take this to her tomorrow. The kids are on spring break this week. And then this was Andy's card. And she's got the confetti in the background and then the confetti here. And the You're Awesome on her little pop-up. Very, very cute. These girls did fabulous. Okay, you guys. Let's get to the next one. Anybody have any questions? I can't. You know, I get stamping and then I forget to look and see if anybody's asking questions. I am so sorry, but I just, you know, you get in a mindset and you're like, oh, I can't. Wait, this is so fun. Hang on, I'm going to plug my phone back in. Okay, there we go. The girls did do good, didn't they? I thought they did fabulous too. All right, let me put a little bit of this stuff away. This over here. I'll make some room for the next projects. This is our wiper card right there. And <laughs> the next card that I have for you. I have to say, I thought it was going to be really complicated, but it wasn't. We're doing a twist and pop card. And um, it was pretty easy. This is the first time I've ever made it. One of my downline that lives in Arizona, she's on my team, Dee Dee Tipkey, she sent me a um, card with a snowman on the inside using our mitten set. And oh my gosh, it was just the cutest thing ever. And so I can't find it. I kept it. It's here someplace, but I can't remember where I put it. Um, if I find that, I will show it to you guys next time. But I'm using the Picture Perfect Birthday. I love, love, love this stamp set. This has been one of my favorites. I love the greetings in it, like cue the confetti, um, treat yourself, celebrate the good stuff. I'm also using the uh, Amazing or Celebrate You Thinlets. These are free during celebration with a $100 order. I used the Stitch Shapes Framelits and the Layering Circle Framelits. And then here's the words from this set. And I'm using the Celebrate and the You. So I've got a really cute card to make for you. I really wanted to get a few more things um, a few more cards made with this layout, but unfortunately, I did not have time because I was busy with the girls today, which was great. I'm not saying, oh, geez, we had a good time, and so I didn't get as far as I wanted to. But this is a picture perfect designer series paper stack, and this is actually photographs of ribbons, bows, photographs of streamers and confetti photographs of balloons. So they took all this stuff and they put it on designer series paper so that everything is real looking, right? Donuts and cookies and candles. This is actually pictures, a picture, a photograph of confetti. 
and some of the party horns and party hats. And then on the back of all of these, oh, and I it took me a while to figure out this one. These are punched out circles of cardstock and then they took pictures of them. Isn't that cool? But on the back of each of these are these really fun, bright designs. So, you know, you can use these for so many things. I absolutely love that. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I've got my cardstock layers here. Let me see. The first thing I wanna do is I want to die cut Oh, and then I forgot to do one little thing here. That's okay. Um, I want to die cut the Celebrate, but I want to turn it into a sticker. So I got some of our adhesive sheets here. I've shown you guys these before. You get like 12 pieces. Yeah, 12 pieces of these that are 12 by 6. I think that's the size. I don't know, but it's a lot in a pack. And what you do is you take a piece of cardstock, however big you're going to die cut or you need a sticker for, and you peel off the backing and you put this on the back of your layer. Okay, and I've got this little piece here that I need to get off yet. This is super, super sticky. So you wanna try to keep your fingers out of it. <laughs> Cause see, I've got it on my fingers right here, but it makes the most amazing stickers. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna bring my big shot in. And now I'm going to take the Celebrate die from the Amazing You Thinlets, and I'm going to die cut that. And then if you want, at the same time, you can die cut um, this piece. I've already done that through the magic of TV. Woohoo! And then the other thing that I need to do that's the part that I forgot is I need another... Um, I need a circle with my stitch shapes. So I'm just gonna move this over, bring this piece in and do my stitch shapes at the same time. Remember that piece we messed up on that first card? Well, here it is. Do not fear. All right, we're gonna die cut all of this. You can put a whole bunch of stuff on your Big Shot and die cut at once. I really like that feature, right? Because if you're running everything through individually, it's kinda, it's kinda putzing around. I'm not much of a putzing around person. I like to get things done. Okay, what are you guys drinking tonight? It's time for a beverage. Oh, Shelby said you could use the negative that's left over for another card. Uh-huh. Genius. I'll show you what she means. Okay, here's our stitch shape circle. Oh, I shouldn't have got rid of my big shot already. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. Let me bring that big shot back in here because we have one more thing to do and I couldn't do it all at once. We're going to take this lemon lime and we're going to put the U right on there and we're going to die cut that out of the center of our stitch shaped circle. Peach wine! Mm. You know, I really wish I was a wine drinker, and I am not. I do not like wine. I don't like coffee. I know. I'm such a weirdo. I'm drinking Pepsi, and everybody's like, what's in that Pepsi? No, I act this weird with nothing in my Pepsi, <laughs> so just know that. <laughs> okay, so Shelby's saying you could use the negative that is left over now you would have to poke out all these little pieces and put them back in place, but that's fine, right? You could use the negative and you could poke out all these little pieces and put them back in place and use that on a card. That's what she's talking about. That's a great idea. Got just a few little stragglers here. Get this ready for my next project. There we go. So yeah, you could do that if you wanted to. All right, here is our sticker. So all you do is peel the backing off of this and you have a sticker word. Woo, that's awesome. Here's our U. I've been making a lot of cards like this lately, so I'm just gonna put the U in here so I can use it later because we're not using that part. We're using this part. 
And if you watched one of my Facebook Lives, I did this on one of them, and I thought it was just like the coolest idea. I'm gonna bring in my mini glue dots. If you guys don't have some of these little miniature glue dots, oh my gosh, put them on your next order. They are fabulous. I absolutely love them. I'm not cutting up glue dots anymore, or um, dimensionals, I mean. Okay, so you wanna put one mini dimensional on the O that came out of the center of here. And let me put this away before I lose it. And then we're gonna put some regular dimensionals on the back of our lemon lime layer. Oh my gosh, it's 720 already? Holy cow, are you guys still okay with me? I'm, I'm running really long tonight. But, you know, fun folds, it takes a lot of explaining to do. I feel like Ricky Riccardi, you have some explaining to do. <laughs> okay, so we've got that popped up on that turquoise glimmer paper. And then I'm going to take this little center for the O. Oh, I love this. Isn't it just the cutest thing ever? I love, love, love it. Okay, let me get these put away so I don't lose them. Okay, we've got that done and we've got that done. We've got a couple more things to do here. I'm gonna get our card all ready to put together and then I'm gonna show you the mechanism. All right, so this is gonna be the front of my card. I'm using the bows and I am just going to glue these. This is three and seven eighths by four and an eighth. I'm gluing this to a white layer that is just an eighth of an inch bigger, so four by five and a quarter. And we're doing that because we're going to put this on black cardstock. So there's one thing. We've got a little bit of stamping to do here. And I am going to stamp, let's see, we're going to use Pool Party. And I want to make one of those little party horns. So I've got the solid image. And I'm gonna stamp that right here. And then we're going to bring in Bermuda Bay with the polka dots. There's polka dots and stripes, so you can do all kinds of different things with these little candles. Or these can be, and that's the other thing, these can be candles or they can be the party horn. So I just stamp those little polka dots right over top of that. And then comes our berry burst. And again, I'm using these colors because that's what's in this paper. That's how I chose these. We're gonna do this little blower deal. There we go. And last but not least is the part that goes vroom. How do you like those sound effects? <laughs> yeah, do you wanna hear that again? Vroom. <laughs> Here we go. And there's our cute little party horn. I think I like it like this better. I was gonna have it on the top, but I think I'm gonna leave it on the bottom. And then I wanna stamp a greeting on this layer. So I've got my Memento ink here. Um, happiest of birthdays to you. This is gonna be just one of my layers on the inside of this card. All right, let's get that put away. We are done stamping things. Okay, you guys ready for this? I hope so. Oh, we can do the front of our card right now. So, I've got a piece of four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half black, basic black cardstock. And I'm just going to hit this with my bone folder. We can put our pieces in place here. I get just a little bit more. It's just striking. I think this is gonna be a guy birthday card. Okay, and then we are going to take this piece and add some glue to the back and we're gonna put it right here. What do you call the set of stamps that you use in each card? They are to the left in some kind of case. Oh, what is this? This is an old wooden case. I just cut them apart. It had a lid. This was an old wooden stamp case. I put a piece of paper in the bottom. This is what we use for our card buffets um, that I have once a month just to hold the stamps in place. Ink side down in here. Everything stays wonderful. 
that's all that is, Suzette. Um, we don't have them anymore, so I don't know how much good it does you. Okay, so we've got that done. Now we're going to peel off the backing of our sticker that we made with those adhesive sheets here. And it comes off just so easy. Now this is delicate, so be careful with it. And now I'm going to just add that right here to the top. What do you think? That, that's a striking card all by itself, right? Okay, so now we need to do the rest of our card. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the panels. And here we go. This piece is 3 by 11, and we're going to score at 2 and 3 quarters, 5 and a half, and 8 and a quarter. So we've got four panels here, just like this. Makes an, makes an M, okay? And I can glue these together right away. All of these little pieces are um, two and a half by two and three quarters. So they're a little bit taller than they are wide. And I'm just going to put this one. This is the mechanism inside the pop and twist card. You guys, if you haven't seen one of these, you're in for quite a treat because it's pretty amazing. And again, this is the same size. I'm just gonna go right here with these balloons. And again, this is just the paper that I'm using from that picture perfect paper that's so cool. This is confetti. I thought this was absolutely perfect for this. Now, you could just put panels on here and stamp stuff. You can do that too. I do have one more thing to stamp. Cue the confetti. And I'm going to stamp that right on this designer paper. There we go. Oh, that didn't turn out all the way. Hang on. Let me see if I can fix it. Well, not so much. I'm going to try it again. What do I have to lose, right? I just really screwed it up. <laughs> okay. Well... That piece goes there. I'm just going to glue it in place. I'll put a little bit of glue on it and then I'll change it out later. I've kept you guys long enough tonight. Holy cow, I'm, I'm really sorry. Okay, so we got that done. So this is done. The front of our card is done. Now we're ready for the inside. We're going to bring back our paper trimmer here. Hi, Patty Canole. Welcome to my Facebook Live. Patty is from my hometown of Nilesville. Okay, we have a piece here. This is 10 and 3 quarters. So you just cut off a quarter inch off this end of basic black by 8 and a half. And on the short side, we are going to score it at 2 and a quarter. Four and a quarter. And six and a quarter. Then we're going to turn it around and we are going to score it on the long side at three and seven eighths, three and five eighths, whoops, I'm sorry, five and three eighths, and six and seven eighths. And I thought, yeah, I don't see my little ruler thing that I made. I made a little ruler thing for you guys. Oh, here it is. Sometimes we have trouble with measurements. I know that they used to be very confusing for me, but this is an inch. And we, we know usually a quarter inch, a half an inch, and three quarters of an inch. But in between each one of those is where our eighths are. So um, this is one eighth right after the quarter is the three eighths, after the half is the five eighths, and after the three quarters is the seven eighths. So I'll put a picture of this on my blog too if you wanna go back and refer to it. I know some people really struggle with measuring. All right, so we have this done. Here's what I'm gonna do. You can take your scissors now and cut out these four corners. And instead of doing that, I like to use my paper cutter. You can do it however you want, but this gives me really nice straight 
lines, right? I just cut right up to that next score line there. Perfect. I'm going to turn this around and do the same thing on the other side. And again, you can use your scissors, whatever works for you. And then we're going to cut these off completely. There we go. There we go. I'm not a really good straight cutter for big areas, so this is this is how I make do. Oops. There we go. Okay, you can save these and use them for something else. This is what we have in the end. And these should be um, diagonal, just cut about a quarter of an inch off these two middle <clears throat> panels here. All right, there we go. Now, here's where the fun comes in. You're going to take your bone folder and you're going to put it right in the middle. We're not folding on any of these score lines yet. This is what we're going to do. You're going to put it right in the middle and we're going to grab this side and we are going to manipulate our paper so that we make sure that it is folding right there where our bone folder is poking into it. We're going to bring this down and we are going to pull the score line that's in the middle of this panel right here to line up with the score line that's in the middle of this one. Okay, and you see how it's kind of crinkling? Don't let that freak you out. That's perfectly fine, and you're going to hit that with your bone folder. Okay, that's exactly what you were supposed to do. Now, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put our bone folder here, and you're gonna bring this side over and make this score line line up with that score line. Just like that. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, now, ready for this? Push on these, pull this together, and it goes together just like this. Pretty easy, huh? So now we're going to just kind of push and pull on this and get it straightened out here. And then we're going to come in with our bone folder and we're going to give it some good creases. Now, each time I've made this card, it's never turned out just completely, absolutely perfect. But guess what? In the end, it doesn't matter. This is like a little crooked. I'm usually pretty weird about that. But this is fine. This end is just a little bit longer than that end. Don't let that worry you. No big deal. Now, I've got two pieces of designer series paper here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to mark them to fit inside this panel. And this is really really easy, you guys. I thought this was going to be like a nightmare trying to figure this out, but it wasn't. I've got the same border around these three sides here. And this, I think, is three and three quarters by six. This I just cut it at three and three quarters out of the six by six. So I've done this. I'm going to turn it this way. I'm holding on to it good. I'm going to grab a pencil. And I'm just going to... Whoops. Now I moved it. Hang on. Don't let it move. I'm going to grab my pencil. And I'm just going to trace this right on here. And now you just want to cut right on that line. These are the scraps that you're going to cut off. Now the first time I did this I wasn't paying attention to which side I did and when I went to put it in place it didn't fit very good. If it doesn't fit in here try this way because you probably did the same thing I did. But I think, nope this piece does go over here. And then you're just going to glue this in place and make sure you have the same border around all three sides here. I think I'm going to cut this just a little bit more here. 
I didn't have to do that with the first one I made, so I must have marked it wrong. Here we go. And again, the only part that's really important is the three edges right here so that they're even. You've got an even black border on there. And in the end, I used a black card base, so it really doesn't make that much difference. All right, now we're going to do this one. So we are going to turn this over and do the same thing here. Oops, hang on. This is getting a little crooked again. There we go. Don't let that mess you up. You see how crooked mine is down here? Don't let that stop you. You just keep going because it doesn't matter. All right. Here we go with this one. And we're going to trim that off. Aren't those cookies look good? I'm getting hungry. I need to bring snacks in here. I'm out of Cheetos. Um, I love those jalapeno Cheetos, the hot ones. Ugh. But not the flaming hot. Those are gross. All they do is like burn your lips off. I got a little frayed edge here. Hang on, I don't want to take the whole corner off. There we go. Okay, we're going to glue this in place. So that was pretty easy, right? I thought, how are you going to get that triangle cut and make this right? But just trace it. Super easy. And again, I'm just looking at my three borders here to make sure they're even. Here we go. Okay, are we ready to make the magic happen? Okay, so here's this. And here's what you're going to do. This was our piece that we made right here. Here it is. You're going to put glue here and here. So on the top and on the bottom or vice versa, but you have to if you're going to do the top over here, you have to do the bottom here and so on and so forth. Top, bottom. So, we're going to use this make a dry fit. We're going to put this right in the middle. Right here. Turn this over and see what we're looking like. I want to make sure everything is nicely centered. That looks pretty good. Okay. And now we've got this laid out flat. And again, we're going to do a little bit of glue here. Done. Here. That was in the top behind there. Now this is in the bottom. Boom. Um, yepper, that works. Okay, are you ready? It all folds up in here. Watch it. It all folds up in there just like that. Okay, let's put our card together. I'm going to give it a dry fit first. I see this is sticking out just a little bit. If you want to, you could dry fit all of this together first and make sure that doesn't happen. You can trim it off a little bit. Hold that all in place. Now I'm going to come back here to this side. Yep, mine's sticking out just a little bit. So you could adjust yours, move it up a little bit so it's not sticking out like this. I did a little bit better on the one that I made earlier today. I hope you guys give this a try because it is super fun. And who doesn't want to get a card like this? I'll show you the other one I made too. Okay, I think that... The, ink, the glue should be dry. Ready? Woohoo! Isn't that just cute? Oh, I see this one's crooked. Look at that one got crooked. Don't let that happen. I moved it before it was dry. Let's see. Where's my other one? Right here. This one I did with um, Berry Burst and the little party horns and the green. What do you guys think? Fun, right? This is called a twist and pop card. And I will have 
all the dimensions on my blog and I'll even take some pictures of this so you can see it but this really this was the first one I ever made and it was it was like okay make that okay do that okay do this and there you go pretty easy I thought pretty darn easy all right you guys let's take a look at what we did tonight I had several different um fun fold cards that I wanted to incorporate with this but they'll have to come at a different time because I knew that this was probably going to take a while fun folds are a little time consuming right here we go here's our wiper cards these are super cute Oh, let me get this off of there. And here are the gift card holders. There we go. These are easy, easy fun folds. And then we also had the ones with the ink resist using the springtime foils. So that's a quite a lineup tonight, isn't it? Holy cow. Impressive. All right, you guys, I hope you learned something new tonight. If you have any supplies that you need and you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, hey, I'd love to earn your business. I'm working hard here. Um, I love bringing these free classes to you. Here's the host code to use if you'd like to place an online order. If your order's under $150, you use the code. If it's over $150, don't use the code. You will get your own Stampin' Rewards. This is only if it's under $150. Um, what else do we have going on? You guys, do you have any suggestions for me? Do you have any suggestions? Do you have, um, some ideas that you'd like to see me do for my next Facebook Live? What did we decide? Am I going to do a Facebook Live on Easter Sunday? I don't know. I guess maybe I'll post later this week. It would be kind of nice to be able to go up to my mom's house and not have to worry about getting home early so that I can, you know, come up with something to do for Sunday night. So that might be kind of nice. I think I might deserve a <laughs> deserve a Sunday off. If I do decide to do something, I'll post it um, that I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live. Otherwise, let's just count on I won't be. But I'll give you guys some notice, probably like Sunday morning. If I'm going to do a Facebook Live, I'll let you know. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. Carol, I'm glad you could join us. Kathy, Suzette. Ooh, mirror image class. That's a great idea. Um, that's kind of tricky to do with the products we have right now. I'll have to think about that one. Let me see. Where'd my notebook go? Here. Here we go. Here's my list of fun fold cards that I had. So... Where did my pen go? There's a pen. Oh, this is my fancy Stampin' Up! pen. This was for my gold promotion. Okay, so mirror image. I like that idea. You think I deserve a break, Linda? Thank you so much. <laughs> I think maybe I do, too. I've got to take Anna down to Milwaukee tomorrow for a um, doctor's appointment. Ooh, washi tape, Lisa said. Different ways to use vellum. Ooh, I like that, Lisa. Okay, and um, washi tape. I like that idea. Washi tape is fun. Happy Easter, Renee. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Thanks, Faye. I'm glad you're on here. I think I may take Easter off. I could use a little ketchup. Um, we are going to Milwaukee. Let's see. It's not next weekend because that's Easter, but the following week on Thursday the 5th, I'll be leaving for Milwaukee. Um, we have a Stampin' Up! event in Milwaukee, so that's really fun. We're going to be heading there and meeting up with, I've got 31 from my team that are going. And then I've got one of my team members is going to Las Vegas because um, there's an onstage Stampin' Up! event there also. And she's from Arizona, so that's pretty cool. Thanks, Tammy. Ooh, embossing paste. Yes, Claudia asked for the embossing paste too, and I really need to do that because I have had a lot of fun with embossing paste. That's a great idea. Thanks, you guys. I really do need ideas, content. Um, I appreciate the suggestions for sure. 
I like that. Happy Easter, Annette. Thank you so much. <gasps> Pamela Oliver, please come and find me in Milwaukee. I would love to meet you. If any, Who else is going to be in Milwaukee? I know I have some other demonstrators watching. Hi, Karen. Karen, I think you won something tonight. Um, where's my list of winners? Karen Drain. Karen, you won. Can you please, if you didn't already, you may have saw this already, but um, private message me your address so I can send you your prize. Yay. Thanks, Denise. I appreciate it. I'm really having a lot of fun with this Facebook Live. I think I finally found um, something that, well, not that I didn't enjoy other things, but... Um, this is this is cool. I enjoy making videos, but I think this is almost easier. When I make videos, then I have to edit them, and I'm so anal. I spend so much time deleting stuff and, you know, uh, splicing stuff together, and it's just a really long process. This Facebook Live stuff is really fun. Thanks for all the um, Easter wishes. And yes, Karen... We are going to be seeing the new in colors. As a matter of fact, as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, we are going to be getting the brand new catalog that comes out to the public June 1st when we go to Milwaukee. And that's another thing I need to tell you guys about. Um, demonstrators get to see the catalog a lot earlier than customers do, obviously. But we also get to pre-order from it a month before it goes out to the public. That's one of the benefits of being a demonstrator or a discount shopper. Did you know that if you buy our discount shopper kit, that you also get the catalog early and you also get to order from it early? I know, right? This is fabulous. So our kit, discount shopper kit, $99.00. Before March 31st, well, through March 31st, so like at 11 o'clock March 31st, this deal ends. Um, the promotion is you get two extra stamp sets of any price added on to our already fabulous discount start shopper kit. Um, you get to choose $125 worth of product, plus those two stamp sets, plus you get a paper pumpkin kit, all for $99. You don't pay any shipping, just tax. This gives you a discount on future orders until the end of June if you don't do anything else. You can still get all the benefits that I get. And after June, if you are placing orders, we have a minimum quarterly uh, quota. We have to reach is $300 a quarter. So if you reach $300 a quarter, you get to stay on for three more months as a discount shopper. If you don't reach $300, nothing bad happens. Stampin' Up! does not come back and knock on your door. They do not come and say, oh my gosh, give us all that stuff back. No way. You get to keep all of it. You don't have to do another single thing. And that's one of the biggest questions I get is, what's the catch? There is no catch. There is no catch. If you want to stay active, you do $300 a quarter. If you just want to buy that starter kit and not do another thing with it, you don't have to. That is stamp, That is how Stamping Up um, has. There's no rules with that. There's no, it's, there's no catch. It's a discount shopper kit. If you want to, then you can put in your own orders at a 20% discount. Um, if you'd like more questions about this, just let me know because I am, yeah, Lori just bought hers. She got $199.50 worth of stuff for $104.50. And actually, Lori, well, based on the two stamp sets that you ordered, if you order the most expensive two stamp sets for those free sets, you get the value of the kit is actually $246 for $99 bucks plus tax. This is kind of a no-brainer. If you have a big wish list that you want to fill, please, by all means, order the discount shopper kit. If you want to get a discount on future orders, you can do that. If you don't, you can keep ordering through me. I am perfectly fine with that, but it is really the best deal out there. And again, the two free stamp sets with it, that only lasts till the end of March. So let me know if you have any questions. I am happy to answer them for you. If you go to my blog, stampabove.com it's at www.astampabove.com in the right hand column go scroll down until you see $99 kit 
click on that. That's got a whole bunch of questions and answers there that um, will clear up any most questions that you might have. So don't forget to use the host code when you're placing an order. I think if nobody has any other questions for me, um, I'm going to sign off. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you. That is so sweet. Happy Easter to everybody. Um, I hope that you get to spend an enjoyable holiday weekend with family, friends, enjoying good food. I've got some Easter eggs to color. My 23-year-old still likes to hunt for eggs. <laughs> I know, bless her heart. And sometimes she has to wake me up in the morning to make me go hide them for her. <laughs> but I still do that, and I love it. It's one of the sweet little things that I can do because I don't have any little kids at home anymore. So I think it's kind of kind of sweet. All right, you guys, I'm going to sign off now. Have a wonderful um, Easter weekend. Blessings to everybody. Bye-bye.